We have inflation reports coming tomorrow and Thursday. The result is the market, the stock market, pretty flat in advance of those inflation numbers. Dow up maybe 30, Nasdaq up maybe all of two points. I'll call that flat. The Department of Defense says it is working round the clock to determine the extent of the recent intelligence leak. What information do we have so far, Laura? Stuart, not much, and I think that's the most alarming part here. So the Pentagon is working to determine how did this happen, how bad is it, who's responsible for it. We have to talk about the timing. I mean, this is a wartime leak of critical information about Ukraine's air defense vulnerabilities, right when Russia might launch their, their spring offensive. Ukraine is betrayed here. Why would they ever trust us with intel, right? I mean, that's what you can take out of this. Um, John Kirby cannot confirm if the leak is contained or if it's an ongoing threat. The Department of Justice launching a criminal investigation was this an inside job or is someone else another entity to blame? We do not know. Raises the anxiety level because there's maybe more to come and we don't know what that more would be Jennifer, if it comes. Jennifer Griffin at Fox is reporting that this could be worse than WikiLeaks. Ouch. All right. Uh, Fox's David Spunt questioned John Kirby about why President Biden won't just pick up the phone and call China's Xi Jinping. Roll tape. We've been told this call is coming for months. Why hasn't he just picked up the phone and called President Xi to say, knock it off? The president looks forward to having uh, another conversation with President Xi. Uh, and we'll do that at the appropriate time. We'll certainly keep you apprised of that. Uh, it's important that those lines of communication stay open. Um, uh, the tensions are certainly high uh, right now. Uh, we like to see this relationship get onto a better footing. Uh, and when it's appropriate for the two leaders to talk, then, then that'll happen. Joining us now, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano with the Heritage Foundation. Uh, this is a lot, there's a lot of war talk around at the moment. To me, it's ominous. Do we look weak? Yeah. You know, asking if our enemies think Joe Biden look, looks weak is like asking if Hannibal Lecter eats meat. I mean, really, is that a question? Okay. <laughs> So we're not doing anything by the looks of it. We won't pick up the phone and call Xi Jinping. Uh, well, you know, we're, we're, it doesn't seem like well, we're doing anything. Well, for the sim simple reason we won't answer the phone. Look, here's the reality. You know, strategic ambiguity is not ambiguous at all. The United States and China both have vital interests in Taiwan. The status quo actually serves both those, in both those interests. So for either side to upset that creates a lot of risk that, that could be really disastrous for both sides. The United States still has a military that China has to contend with. And, and I think we've seen that in the fact that the Chinese are really willing to be incredibly demonstrative, but, but are they willing to cross the line and start a war? Here's the problem, is they look at the calendar and they think, here's a guy that might not be around in two years. And every day they wake up and they pray to whoever, whatever God they pray to, that they have Joe Biden here so they can figure out how to take best advantage of that. So what they're doing right now is they're demonstrating how weak and feckless he looks compared to the Chinese. And there's a reason why Macron goes to China ostensibly to negotiate on Ukraine and comes back basically saying, oh, well, we should abandon the Americans completely. Because the Chinese are telling him, dude, do you really think that Joe Biden has your back? Is, do you think Europe's walking away from the U.S.? Oh, I don't think it is. I think this is probably Macron's worst hour in foreign policy. The reality is, is Europeans know that there is no European security without transatlantic security, and there is no transatlantic security without the U.S. So for Macron literally to come back and, and insult the president of the United States and say, well, we don't care about America's interests in Asia, which makes no sense because the French actually have, of all the European countries, they're ones that actually do have interests in Asia. So the whole thing is really all about Joe Biden and how everybody figures out what do we do with the weakest president we've had in modern American history over the next two years? And a lot of people are looking, and China's playing this card, and Macron really just plays into their hands. But the, the danger here, presumably, is a mistake on either side. I mean, we're, we're lined up against each other, a mistake on either side, and you've got an escalation, and who knows where it goes. Yeah, well, that's always the danger in foreign policy, is that somebody does, you know, something wrong and stupid. But this is where, what's, what's the margin of error here? And it really comes back to 
the U.S. military. The U.S. military capability is the insurance card against things really spinning out of control. So, again, it comes back to Joe Biden. Look what he's done the last two years in the U.S. military, how he's prioritized green energy and diversity policy and everything but military readiness, and how he's introduced ridiculously flat budgets that don't really address dealing with the rising China threat. And the Chinese just look at the numbers and they say, not today, but look down the road. Four, five, six, seven years, America is a paper tiger then. And so, again, it comes back to presidential leadership. And that's why the world is riskier today than it was before the day Joe Biden became president. Okay, we got it. Strong stuff. Uh, Mr. Califano, thank you very much. Uh, Colonel, sir, thanks very much for joining us this morning. <laughs> we do appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, my friend. Now,